Hey everybody, GT here from GT's Barbecue. I get a lot of questions about my pellet grill. Um, this pellet grill is made by a manufacturer called Rectech. Most people are familiar with a brand called Traeger, um, Yoder, um, Pit Boss, lots of varieties of uh, different manufacturers of pellet grills out there. Um, they pretty much all work exactly the same way. Uh, you're going to see a big swing in price from one to the other. So uh, I've had this now for, uh, it was four years this spring. So I thought it might be nice to do a little review, kind of bring everybody up to speed on uh, how this works, how it functions, uh, what's been my experience over the last four years with it. Just kind of give you an honest review uh, in case you're thinking about getting a pellet grill and you want to know what they're all about. So I don't want to compare any brand to another. I've had several grills. I've had Green Mountain grills. I've had Traegers. Um, some, of the, uh, some of the pellet grills I've had in the past, quite frankly, had a pretty big swing in temperature. So if you'd set the thing at 250 degrees, it might dip down to 235, 40 degrees, and it might swing up uh, at sometimes to 260 degrees. So I experienced as much as a 20, 25 degree swing in temp as it cooked. That's not a big deal. You know, it's meat and it's heat. Over time, it's gonna get the job done regardless. But I really wanted to uh, kind of up my game a little bit and find something that I felt was a little more consistent. So I started to do some research. Um, originally, I had my heart set on a Yoder. Um, Yoder smokers have a great reputation. They're really well made. The one that was about the same size as this was going to cost me about $2,500. Um, that's a lot of money, but I'm kind of a believer in you get what you pay for. But throughout my research, I ran across a lot of videos and reviews on Rectech. So I really started to look into it and the way it's built, um, the computer control, the PID that runs this thing, uh, review after review after review, um, these things got pretty high ratings. And uh, this particular model is a 680, mean, meaning it has a 680 square inch uh, cook surface inside. Uh, they don't make this anymore. They now make the 700, but it's essentially the same thing, except it's got some upgrades. It's all stainless steel, and uh, it's a little bit bigger. Other than that, pretty much the same thing. At the time, four years ago, I got this for $9.95, delivered, free shipping. And at the time, the grills I looked at, uh, you know, they were going to be $7.50 minimum, and they range up to you know, uh, infinity. Like I said, that Yoder I wanted was about 2,500 bucks. So I ended up going with this, you know, it's been a dream. It's worked flawlessly this entire time. It's, uh, amazingly consistent. It's very conservative when it comes to its use of fuel, which I'll get into in a minute. I'm not going to say it's any better or any worse than anything else, but dollar for dollar, uh, in my opinion, it's hard to beat these things. So, uh, stay tuned. I'll be back here in a second. We'll kind of go through some of the features and benefits I think this thing has and uh, give you my honest opinion on it. So uh, stay tuned. I'll be back here in a minute. So I'm going to start with a quick walk around <clears throat> of the grill itself. Here you can see it's called a drip bucket. The, the juices or grease that comes off the meat will drain out of uh, that tube. This is consistent with pretty much all pellet grills and drip into that bucket. And I like to get these uh, disposable liners that go inside the bucket, kind of helps with cleanup. Uh, the outside, pretty straightforward. I like the color. Uh, it does have this little uh, ring on the front that you can put a towel on. Uh, I really like the horn handles. And uh, uh, you can get an accessory front shelf for it. I opted not to do that. I used this really high-end custom-made folding TV tray. That works really well for me. The controller's housed over here. Uh, this is one upgrade I chose to purchase. Um, it came with a uh, controller, a PID, uh, still very accurate, but it didn't have Wi-Fi. So I really wanted something with Wi-Fi. So I ended up getting this um, 
it has two different ports for probes and then the probes feed through this little uh, this little chute in the side of the smoker I'll get to uh, some of that in a minute this thing has zero swing in temperature uh, once you set the temp on this thing let's say I set it at 250 degrees the temp sensor which is inside kind of see that back in there sorry about the lighting the computer uses an algorithm that tests the temperature of the air uh, I don't remember exactly I, it's thousands of times per minute as it needs fuel it will activate the auger which will uh, pump in more fuel to either raise or lower the temperature to keep it where it's supposed to be and then as far as the fuel storage chamber itself this has a hopper in the back so traditionally pellet grills will have a hopper on the side so the um, mechanism the auger has to move the pellets all the way across to the middle where the burn box is the design of this is the auger's right down there and so it really only has to go about six inches to get the wood moved into the uh, burn pot which I think that just allows a little less opportunity for clogs or flaws all pellet grills burn these wooden uh, wooden pellets can get a look at that there you can get different kinds of pellets different flavors of wood fruit woods apple cherry pecan uh, you can get oak you can get mesquite and one of the things I really like about this design first of all it's a 40 pound capacity so based on the assumption that you're going to get about an hour of uh, burn time per pound this thing will easily run overnight um, I've run it as long as 14 15 hours in a row and not run out of pellets so uh, another thing I like because it has two separate chambers you could put cherry wood in one side apple wood in the other side and it automatically mixes the two as it runs through the auger uh, into the inside so I'm gonna get my phone set back up on the tripod here a second we'll kind of go over the uh, interior so hang tight I'll be right back so on the inside this is actually an accessory that I purchased separately it didn't come with it it really comes in handy for things like corn on the cob or buns or uh, really just adding extra square inches to the cooking surface although frankly I rarely use this thing and I store it down below and then these are really heavy duty gauge stainless steel grates I believe it's 308 is the weight um, one of the things I suggest when you look at pellet grills pick up the grates and uh, and just kind of feel how heavy they are you know it'll give you an idea of how long they're gonna last which also the door itself this thing is really thick and heavy and what what that means to me is once it gets warm it tends to stay warm it doesn't let a lot of heat escape which is one of the reasons I believe it's so fuel efficient one thing I did add to this door sorry was I went around and I put a, a high heat gasket around it it did have a little bit of smoke coming out and uh, so I just put this on there and that completely sealed that thing up so that's something you might consider this is a heat dissipator again it's made of the same heavy gauge stainless I like to put foil on mine I'm not going to get started on that but as the heat comes up first it hits this diffuser so the burn pots down in here the fires going the heat comes up hits this and it's forced around the outside so you have radiant heat here and more direct heat coming around the sides which then hit the deflector plate which evens out the heat even more so you really have very very little difference in, in temp from one side to the other and it sits uh, at an angle uh, so as the drippings come down they just go into the bucket 
take this diffuser out. Get in here. See if I can get you a good shot of this. So this is, sorry, that light is horrible. So this is the burn pot. The pellets are augered down in here. It does have a ceramic igniter, which is uh, an upgrade from, I don't know what traditional igniters were made from, but I know some brands have a real problem with the igniters burning out. Fire starts in here, uh, and then it has a fan, sorry, controlled by this probe, which as I said, constantly uh, checks out the temperature. Uh, the algorithm is uh, many thousand times per minute, and they pretty much all work in some capacity like that. And again, the auger, the space between the fuel and the actual burn pot is not very far, as opposed to having to auger all the way across to the center. Put this back in here. It can only go one way. Very simple. This just sets right back in here. Like so. And the grates go back on. And that's pretty much it. I usually clean this out about every third cook or so. You don't have to clean it out every time. Uh, I just kind of vacuum out some of the uh, some of the dust from the from the burn pot. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, if you're going to use foil on your heat deflector, you want to make sure it doesn't roll over the edges because that can uh, impede the heat uh, from rolling up around and can affect uh, the consistency of your temp. So uh, that's pretty much how it works. We're going to fire it up here in a minute. I'll show you how to turn it on and uh, give you an idea how long it takes to heat up. So. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. So let's power this guy up. We just have a button here. I typically turn this on with my phone, but I'm using my phone to record. So uh, it automatically came on to 250 because that's where I had it set last. It'll always come on to where you had it set before. Uh, it'll go as low as about 200 and as high as about 500. And then this is the actual temp. It's 95 degrees out here today. And it's just showing me uh, the ambient temp inside the grill. I like to leave my grill lid open for the first couple of minutes till I start to see smoke, which and I can already smell it. I don't know if you can see that, but we're already starting to get some smoke. I don't know, what's that been, 60 seconds? Coming up from the burn pot. Now I shut the lid. And it's going to start to come out the stack. So yeah, you can see it's starting to cook away. Once it settles in and figures out what the temp is in there and how much fuel it needs, it'll automatically turn that fan down. And then the fan will come on and off as needed. So. So it's up to about 98 degrees so far, 99. And I find it usually takes about five minutes and it'll be up to 250 degrees. So it's not that much slower than a traditional um, gas barbecue grill as far as getting up to temp. One other thing I wanted to touch on is the temp probes. This has two different ports for temp probes and that really comes in handy when you're cooking to a temperature which you typically will be and essentially the way they work is we just run them through here you have a piece of meat over here run the other one in have another piece of meat over here like so close up the hatch, close up the lid, and now I'll be able to monitor the temperatures inside. Another feature I really like about the Rectech is it has a light inside. I cannot tell you how that comes in handy when you're cooking at night, especially in the wintertime when it gets dark early. As far as the size, they make different sizes. This thing will hold one, two, three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight, eight pound pork butts with no problem. So one of the things you want to factor in when you decide uh, what size to get is how much food you're realistically going to cook. This is uh, definitely more than a typical family of four would need, but uh, we entertain a lot. So I found this to be the perfect size. So uh, that's about it. That's the walk around. Uh, hang tight and I'll be back and just kind of give you my final thoughts. See you in a minute. So that's my overview of the Rectech. Dollar for dollar, pound for pound, I personally think they're hard to beat. Very fuel efficient, has a large fuel capacity. And uh, I have had zero problems with this thing uh, so far in the four years. Um, one thing it does come uh, with is a six year bumper to bumper warranty. I believe that's the best in the industry. So, you know, hey, a pellet grill is a pellet grill as far as the way they function. They're all gonna do the job for you. In my opinion, they're all superior to a gas grill because you get that beautiful wood flavor uh, in the meat. It does have a, uh, an extreme smoke setting. If you want it to cook really low and put in extra smoke, it can do that. I've baked cookies in here. I've baked desserts in here. It really does it all. When you set it to a higher temp, what happens is the smoke basically just comes up, rolls across and comes right out the stack. It doesn't sit inside the chamber and really uh, saturate the food with smoke. So at higher temps, if you want to cook desserts uh, or casseroles or anything like that, and you don't want to get a lot of a smoky uh, flavor, it does it just great. So it'll smoke, it'll bake. Uh, 500 degrees is plenty. Uh, to do a nice job on a steak. Uh, it doesn't sear as far as sear marks go as well as a grill would, but that's not how it's designed. So I have more grills than this for that very reason. Uh, depending on what I'm going to cook, uh, that's what I'm going to use. So I double thumbs up. I personally love this thing. So hopefully this information is useful to you. At least uh, you'll understand a little bit more about how pellet grill works. The new replacement for this, the, uh, the 700, uh, is only, uh, I believe it's $1,195. So it's only $300 more for the bigger one with all the upgraded features and all the stainless steel than what I paid for this four years ago. So uh, I would take a look at that and, you know, get on YouTube, look for some comparisons. But, uh, you know, this Rectech's been a dream for me. So thanks so much for watching. As always, stay safe. If you're so inclined, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. And we'll see you next time.